How does it feel to be 24 hours away from game one of the Eastern Conference Finals? Uh, feels good, man. It feels good. It's uh, my first few seasons in Atlanta, as you guys know. We um, made the decision to build through the drafts, so and now to see all those guys go out there and be able to participate and have success in the playoffs, it's, it's a very good feeling. All right, so I'm glad you brought that up because there are so many parts of this turnaround that I want to talk about, but why don't we start with Kevin Herter what, and what he did on Sunday night. Can you take me back to the draft evaluation process? What did you see in him at that time that made you feel like he could make a significant impact? Well, I think the big thing that stood out about Kevin, thinking back to his days at Maryland, were just his size and his skill set. You know, he's six foot seven. Um, he's got good bounce off the floor. Um, and he gets kind of labeled as a shooter um, because he happens to be a white guy. But he, he's, he's so much more than a shooter. You know, he can get in the lane. He's got a really good pull up um, because of his size and athleticism. You know, he can shoot over the top about any defender once he gets in there. Um, and he's a very good secondary ball handler uh, in pick and roll situations. So just a lot of versatility with him uh, on the floor. Travis Schlank is my guest. What about John Collins? He was your first draft pick. And his role certainly has changed over the years. Sunday night, he had 14 points and 16 boards. He played some really strong defense. He's been on some teams that have suffered quite a bit of losses. So that said, what's it mean to you to see him advance to the conference finals? Yeah, as, as you mentioned, you know, John was the, the first guy we drafted when I got here. Um, you know, he's been through this whole process. So, you know, to see him be able to go out there and play, you know, in the biggest stage on the league in the playoffs um, and have success there uh, is really fulfilling. You know, he's He's, you know, kind of the heart and soul of our team. You know, he shows up to work every single day, uh, extremely positive, you know, sets the tone early with his mood and positive energy. And he's, he's just had a, he's had a great first four years in the league. And, you know, we're hopeful that he'll continue to have a, a long career with us. We're talking to Hawks basketball. Travis Schlank joining us. You know, I could talk to you about Trey Young for an hour or more. I mean, I could not be more impressed by him, his game, his personality, his leadership, pretty much everything about the guy. When did you first realize that he was not just a good player, but a franchise player and maybe even better than that? Well, I think, you know, just really from day one with the, with the guy, you know, you know, he shows up. Um, and from his first summer league, he was written off as a bust in the draft. Um, obviously, you know, the trade that was made draft night for him. Uh, I think he went like one for 11 from three in the summer league, and it was over. His career was over. Um, but, you know, he never lets any of that outside noise affect him. And, you know, just really from day one, he's got in the NBA. You know, he's just, he's just put up numbers, and then they were hollow numbers. Um, you know, and this year we actually went out in free agency and, you know, brought him to the vets to help. Uh, stabilize our young core um, and you can tell you know the past you know two second half of the season I think we we're 28 and 13 or something like that and obviously you know being able to get eight wins in the playoffs you know it's more than just hollow stats with him you know he, he affects the game um, with his ability to get in the lane and make plays for others and obviously his ability to score as well. Yeah, what about the fact that, I mean, it's so true, right? Even if his shots aren't going down, he's going to find ways to help the team. I mean, how much of this particular team is a reflection of Trey and his personality? Uh, on the offensive end, it's a large part of it, uh, obviously. You know, when we run pick and rolls, I mean, you, you, have to, you have to make sure that you have every person on the floor covered, um, you know, starting with the ball and Trey. You know, you can't be back and drop coverages or he's going to get into the lane and shoot his little floater. Um, you have to account for the roller because he's great at throwing lobs to our guys that stretch the floor vertically. And if you leave a shooter on the perimeter, I mean, he's one of the best passers in the league with either hand, and he'll zip, zip a left-handed uh, pass across the court to a shooter in the corner. So, you know, his vision, vision, his ability to read the pick and roll is really where everything starts with us on the offensive end. Travis Schlank is joining us. You know, I could keep highlighting individual players, but the thing is, you're having to do this without the likes of Cam Reddish and DeAndre Hunter and other guys who are battling injuries. So I could see where it might be easy for guys to say, you know what, we're a little bit too banged up. We've had a heck of a run and then pack it in. But this team has not done that. How would you describe the mental toughness and the resilience of this group yeah no obviously um you know like most teams this time of the year everybody's banged up especially this season it was such a condensed season um you know playing games literally every other day uh for months at a time uh so everybody's dealing with a little something but you know our, our guys uh have stuck together and you know have to give uh, coach mcmillan a ton of credit for that 
um, you know, since we, you know, made him the coach, you know, he's, he's just had very simple, clear messaging with these guys to stick together. You know, he used the, the analogy of a fist. When you bring your fingers together and create a fist, it's really easy to knock someone out when you're, five fingers are apart acting separately now you're just slapping someone and you're probably not going to win the fight that way um so guys have just banded together and you know through injuries you know the five guys on the floor um have stuck together and and fought together and you know that's been a big reason for our turnaround tell you what a pretty simple but powerful analogy what about the decision you had to make in late february i can't imagine that was an easy decision to move on from lloyd pierce who i know you think very highly of i do as well in fact how did you know at that time that that was a move that needed to be made what was your thinking well i don't know if there's ever a good time um you know to to make those decisions um you know we just felt at the time you know right before the all-star break um it, it was just time to time to make that change um give coach mcmillan an opportunity to kind of get everything in place over that small break at all-star break for you know the few small changes the, that he was able to to make and wanted to make with the team, but certainly there's never a good time to make an in-season coaching change. And you know, obviously, as you mentioned, I have a ton of ton of respect for Coach Pierce, and certainly wishing nothing but the best. And um, you know, those are just difficult decisions that have to be made, unfortunately. Right. Not to ask my opinion, but I love Nate McMillan. I've always been a huge, huge fan of him. He's the interim head coach right now. I understand that you've got a ton on your plate right now, but does it feel like a situation where you might have found your head coach for the future? Well, uh, I've said a couple times, you know, he, he's had the longest job interview in the history of job interviews. <laughs> right. He's not battled the park so far. So. <laughs> All right. I can respect that. Listen, when you look <laughs> at Milwaukee, what are your early thoughts on that matchup? Yeah, they're, you know they're they're a very good team. You know, obviously the the head of the snake is uh, Giannis, but you know I I really feel like Chris Middleton's one of the most underrated stars in this league. You know, he he's a very good player. You know, Drew Holiday's a very good player. You know, they've got size, they've got shooting. You know, they're they're physical, so it's going to be an extremely tough matchup. But you know, we're ready for the challenge. But uh, they're they're a really good team. Travis, before I let you go, let me ask you this. The team, it's the first team since 1994, the Pacers back then, to reach the conference finals without having an all-star. I'm curious what your reaction is when you hear that stat. I mean, is it that, come on, how is Trey not an all-star? Or maybe is it something else? Um, you know, I, I, I didn't know that stat, I guess. Um, you know, if, so much of the all-star, as you, as you know, is driven by you know fan vote, media vote, and player vote. And, you know, it's really where the team is. You know, if, you, if we did not have a great record at the All-Star break, I think we were, you know, five or six games under 500. Um, and, you know, we've had a really good run here the second half. So looking at it like that, it's not all that surprising. Um, but, you know, it's also, it's, not, it's also not easy to be an All-Star. You know, there's only 12 spots. So <laughs> there's a lot of good players in the Eastern Conference. Fair enough. And hey, one final thought. When you and I have talked in the past, we talked about your time with Golden State. I'm curious, how did the experience of building a team or being in that situation kind of help inform what you've done with the Hawks? Yeah, well, obviously it's, it's been a big influence on, you know, what we've tried to do here. You know, the way that we tried to to build out the Golden State Warriors, uh, I mean, trying to use the same formula here is, you know, the character of the individuals we bring in is extremely important, and the skill level, obviously, is <laughs> important. And those are the two main factors that, you know, we look for in Golden State and we're trying to duplicate that here in Atlanta. And the Hawks are on to the conference finals. Travis Schlenk, my guest. Travis, I really appreciate it. I know you've got a lot on your plate. Thanks for making time for us and for this program. Really nice to get caught up with you, and good luck to you. All right. Thank you, Roman. Good talking to you, Travis. Thank you very much.